next, we have our first tag team approach to QI. And we have uh, Brandon, Tony, and Lydia talking about transformation of the Moran intern year. You guys are going to make Brandon roll up here? <laughs> All right. Hey, everyone. It's us three again. So uh, this is a follow-up from our project from last year. All three of us are involved in um, changing our current intern year. It's gone through a lot of transformations over the past two years, and we've been really excited. And we're moving into phase two. Last year was kind of phase one, so I'm going to start off, us off with just reintroducing what we've been doing, and then uh, my colleagues here will take it up on what the changes have been, the results, and what, where we're going next. So just a review on our phase one approach. This really came about when we had this mandate um, saying that ophthalmology needs to have an integrated first year and um, three months of that first year needs to be ophthalmology. We've had this for a really long time, but this mandate has made it so that every ophthalmology program in the country needs to be on this too. And so we saw this as an opportunity for us to also make changes, one, to make our program uh, you know, competitive and also as still a place where other applicants now want to come because all programs are now offering this, but also as a way to improve ourselves. So it was a great opportunity to look at that and see what we could do to change. So when uh, we presented this last year, we titled it, oh, we wanted to flatten the curve. This was really during the COVID time. And it was because we were going through our PGY two year and we really noted that, you know, there's a really high learning curve. And for many decades, this was like what happened in ophthalmology. You did an intern year and you just came in PGY two and got flattened. And that was like supposed to be the status quo. Um, but we thought, you know, why don't we change this now that there's this integrated year? Can we make a smoother transition and make it easier for our PGY twos to assimilate and, you know, make it a safer time for everyone and a better learning experience too. So that's, this is where most of our uh, focus has been. So um, we're going to talk about some data here that Lydia will present. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk about kind of the current data later, but this is just what we got last year when we looked at the actual time that was spent in clinic. And we noted that a large chunk of the time that we had was spent with purely administrative work or HNPs where we did not even see the patient or examine the patient and felt like that was not an optimal learning uh, opportunity for the intern. And this is really cool props to Lydia because she collected all of this data herself without any prompt. And this is really just in a way to capture what was happening because we felt like we needed some improvement. And so after this, we started this whole project, uh, Dr. Petty, Dr. Simpson, many other residents to, to help improve things. And first we want to look at developing our curriculum and thinking of what are some places that we could work on. So we looked at first the consult service and the triage clinic. And so we revised our schedule, built that in so that the VA intern could come over to the Moran and work in the triage clinic and in the, uh, along with the consults residents. So the first six weeks are in triage, um, Tuesday and Friday, and then in the last six weeks, they're on consults. And there was a little nuance here where every other Tuesday, they would have a half day instead of a full day. But regardless, this was the current schedule. And so we asked last year's interns how they felt about all this. And so this is where we went into phase two. Thanks, Dr. Mai, for the comprehensive review. So moving forward to phase two. So like Dr. Mai kind of said, we want to look at everything that we did. We want to look at the data, which Dr. Sauer will present here shortly, and also look at feedback from the interns based off of satisfaction regarding the changes and if any other changes need to be made. <laughs> So back to kind of that data that I showed earlier, and I want to focus your attention on the numbers of the data or the time spent on clinical time. So uh, seeing patients, writing notes, uh, attending lectures, all of that. That was about 27 to 36% for our class. Um, the current interns, I got uh, feedback from three interns, but two of them actually wrote down the numbers in minutes how they spend their time. And this is the data on how they, um, how it has changed. So I think this is a huge success. We went from kind of 
in the lower 30s numbers to the upper 80s of clinical time. And this is just incredible to see how this has changed and really transformed the intern year. So we were super stoked about this, very happy, but we thought, what if we can make it even better? So that was the idea of doing the survey. And what we did is we had a couple of questions. We asked the interns um, after these changes, please write the following um, on your experience with consults versus triage. So those were the two main changes we made in phase one. You can see here the mean in regards to autonomy, overall learning, and diversity of pathology. They were all higher um, with the consult experience and the consult rotation versus the triage. So we kind of scratched our heads and said, okay, well, maybe we should just do all consults. And that's the next question we asked. Would it be more beneficial just to do both six weeks blocks on the consult service? And a whopping four out of four said yes. And then uh, we also asked another question, how comfortable do you feel performing each of the following? And then in regards to the ones that kind of stuck out to me, these would be the lower ones. So PEDS consults, 2.75, inpatient consults, 3.75, and treasuring telephone consult or telephone calls. And those are all things that we do extensively in the consult service. So we thought that we could um, benefit these interns with more consult time. And lastly, all roads here lead to consults, which you can see. So just kind of highlighting, um, we asked the general question, how can we improve your overall experience? And a lot of them basically just said more time on consults. So we snapped our fingers, bang, switched it over to consults. So now we have a revised, revised schedule where the interns are spending more time on consults, less on triage, or still some time on triage. And we're hoping that this will do the trick. Thank you, everybody. And thank you to the awesome team. Any questions? I also have a short comment so, or question. So I think it's 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 a great improvement for the um, first year residents. But who's do doing the administrative work now? <laughs> <laughs> use the mic. Use the mic. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we were able to switch around some of the processes. A lot of time was spent initially on the HNP visits that were scheduled into our clinic, and they were like pure HNP visits where we were just, um, yeah, doing the HNP for the patient without even really examining them. And that entire uh, visit got completely uh, cleared out. So if we go to that data set, like that whole, uh, sorry. Um, um, so the whole category of HNP without an optomic exam did not happen for any of the interns this year. Um, and then the a lot of the purely administrative work that still remains is making chief packets, um, I think anticoagulation consoles and like placing certain things um, is still in that category. But we what we are not doing anymore is scheduling all the follow-ups for all the patients uh, for all the surgeries and doing a lot of the scheduling administrative work that came with the HNPs, which is currently done by Jay, who's our new surgical administrator. So he took a large chunk of the administrative work and then... Um, yeah, the HNPs are kind of not there anymore. Judith has a comment. I, I don't know how much it's going to play out as you go along. Um, there's a tendency when you've gone through medical school and done your internship for everything to be very heavily weighted towards inpatient uh, care, which is not at all the real life experience of every other practicing ophthalmologist after they finish their residency. Uh, and I guess I would wonder, um, I, I know that the inpatient consult service is, is very cool and interesting, but how well does that um, translate to your long-term sort of career experience? And I'm not sure if the PGY4s could, could sort of comment on that, the skills that you learn. A relevant piece of information, which is out of the scope of what they presented, is that uh, we will now have a resident uh, in triage every afternoon, uh, not interns. Uh, and, and it's a really great point uh, you make, Judith, as far as the timing of when we're teaching things and being in triage versus on consults. And if, if I may you know, sneak in and what I really suspect the answer here is um, they start out on consults uh, for years as Lone Rangers, now with Teresa's support. 
straight away is just running the whole service in pediatrics and at the university. And, and that's, that's such a significant um, burden to shoulder that that opportunity in the intern year to prep for that uh, really has seemed to be the thing that's driven that, that strong desire to make sure they're prepared for consults uh, where they clearly are going to become experts in uh, the other side of uh, undifferentiated patients coming into the clinic. And then again, during chief year, now this is new, um, each afternoon we'll have a, a resident in triage the entire year. And that, that's again, a, a new change. The comment I wanted to make during chief year. The comment that I wanted to make is just, just an overall uh, comment to ev every one of the speakers so far. Uh, this residency is very much a living organism that thrives on you and your ideas and making it better. The VA is the perfect example of a bureaucracy where there are so many reasons why we can't make change because so many things are really out of our hands. And I just have to give credit to you all, to Dr. Simpson and, you know, Griffin, Teresa, Catherine, uh, Srav, all of you come in and just, just ask, how can we make this possible? Uh, there, I, I'm thinking back to um, even how we pay for you as residents, the fact that we're having you go over to the university while you're at the VA and how that could land Dr. Simpson in jail, for instance, if she didn't do it right, where she had this, now the glaucoma chief is going over. And that that's a tremendous burden, administrative burden on leadership to be able to make these things happen. And anyway, it's it's incredibly heartening to see how how many improvements you guys are making in the residency and caring enough to make it happen. Thank you.